Seven of Nine entered the Star Trek franchise in Voyager's fourth season, and she very quickly became a fan's favourite. She even brought a whole new concept to the series, that being how do you help an ex-Borg assimilate, pun intended, back into some kind of normality, and reclaim her individuality. The crew, to a point, was pretty much successful at doing this, and this even led to a somewhat controversial relationship with Voyager's first officer. However, that said, in human terms, she really is just a child. Think about it. She was assimilated at a very young age, and the only way at that point that she could physically progress was a Borg maturation chamber. The only information that she had was what the collective downloaded into her. She lost all the family that she had at the time, and didn't really have any ties to the world that she knew of. So you could argue that she wasn't even in control and at the complete mercy of the collective, as she didn't really have any reason to resist. In fact, the argument could be made is that she never really lost her parents, because they were with her in the collective. So again, she never really had a reason to resist. The perfect drone. So when Janeway, inverted brackets, rescued her, you really were dealing with someone who was mostly Borg and were pretty much a blank slate with a singular way of thinking, the Borg way. You're not even dealing with a Locutus or Picard that was assimilated for just a few days, or even a victim of Wolf 359. At least with them, they could quickly gain their memories back and would very quickly become the people that they were. Just watch the episode Unity in Star Trek Voyager. So the reason that I bring this up is that I wanted to highlight how big the task would have been to deal with an ex-Borg such as Seven. The fact that it happened at all was a huge miracle, to be honest. Yes, yeah, Seven would have the raw data that was assimilated from Starfleet personnel at Wolf 359 and later in the Battle of Sector 001. But as far as her personality was concerned and forging relationships with the crew, you'd be pretty much working from scratch. You wouldn't have the resources of the rest of Starfleet. Now, with all that in mind, Seven's initial experiences of humanity was from what she learnt on Voyager. So really, she was raised by a Starfleet family with Starfleet ideals. So I'd actually argue that even after after getting back to Earth, there was still work to be done, but there was a basic framework there. So once the crew had settled back into life in the Alpha Quadrant, Seven applied to enroll into Starfleet, who apparently weren't too comfortable with the idea of an ex-Borg in the organisation. But Seven being Seven, with all these newfound Starfleet ideals, she wanted to still help people, so she was drawn to the Fenless Rangers for a undetermined amount of time. I think it's safe to assume that while she was with the Rangers, she was on the frontier of all of the action, not in the paradise of the Federation, and she was pretty much flying by the seat of her pants. She got to know the galaxy for how it really was as opposed to through the squeaky clean lens that was Starfleet, and she would have to grow up very fast. And apparently this included how to hold her liquor. I'm starting to like this version of Seven already. So fast forward to the present day. She now has all of the collective knowledge of the Borg, including that of Starfleet captains and possibly admirals. She has been exposed to the values of Starfleet by people who she regards as family. She knows how to handle herself in the galaxy at large. I mean, you could call that the 25th century version of being street smart. She has at least a year's experience as a Starfleet commander, and to be honest, due to her treatment by Captain Shaw, video linked at the end of this one, she must be itching to just get into that captain's chair so she can finally show Starfleet what she's made of. Now, also bear in mind, even though it's a little while after it, I'm sure Starfleet could still use some good captains after the Dominion War. So I ask you, is she ready? Now, I just wanted to tackle one last thing, which I kind of heard here and there on other channels, that making Seven Captain was a woke decision. Now, I do want these videos to be more of a conversation than anything else, but here's my opinion on this one. So, Seven wasn't a new character that was pulled out of thin air. She wasn't race or gender swapped. She is not a Mary Sue, as she's had her struggles. Anyone who's watched Star Trek Voyager would know this. And, most importantly, she wasn't just stomping all over the white male superior officer. He wasn't just a bad guy. He was still dealing with trauma. Does this excuse the way he treated Seven? No, of course it doesn't. But you get to ultimately understand where it was coming from. There was nuance in this story. It's also shown that Seven has the respect of the crew under her command. So even if they didn't make her captain, it would still be stupid to remove her as the first officer. Personally, I have no issue with Seven being captain, and I'm actually excited 
to see how it plays out from here. I just hope that whoever takes over as showrunner after Terry Metalis respects the character and respects the lore of the show without showing any personal agenda or using the show to push, as the critical drinker would say, THE MESSAGE. But there is one question I'd like to ask. Would you like Mayo with that?